Oh, <laughs> Bob, we have Mine. two. We, both Bob and I together were thinking about this. We have treated over, you know, thousands of rotator cuff patients. Shoulder. Shoulder patients over the years, mm. often with rotator cuff problems. And we came down with three treatments that worked the best. And we a lot like the, these. And a lot of these treatments actually prevented surgery. Right. So we're going to get right at it after this message. <laughs> Bob and, and Brad. <laughs> Not too much. Bob and Brad. The two most famous physical therapists on the internet. We just wanted to show a little bit of the mechanics of the shoulder. You realize that the shoulder has one of the most complicated joints in the whole body. It can move so many degrees of angles. It has so many working parts. Let's just show the blade. Show the shoulder blade? Oh, plus the shoulder blade. Right. And that is all part of it. One big thing is impingement. And impingement is probably up to 70% of shoulder problems. And this, Bob's finger, is going to sacrifice his finger. Right. That represents the supraspinatus tendon. And impingement means... Ow! Yeah, that's what happens. When you go up like this, say it again, Bob. Ow! There you go. we got to eliminate that impingement. Okay, so the first, if you're having the shoulder problem, we're going to take a McKenzie. Robin McKenzie. Right, he was one of the, f he's passed away now, but he is, every therapist knows about him. This technique uh, has, I, I can think of one patient right off the top of my head. She was scheduled for surgery. We did this extension exercise. Surgery canceled wow. after a week. Uh, so anyways, uh, in this extension where the shoulders goes back this way. So if you can go back this way and it feels okay, well, we need to do that more often. Right. So we'll do it up to 10 times and it's like, oh, it feels good. It feels better. I can lift up my arm so higher. So maybe six to seven times a day. Right. And if we want to add a little uh, overpressure, you can take a stick like this, a broom handle, a stick, whatever, bring it back to here, and then I'm gonna drop down and a little more stretch. None of this should create sharp pain, it should just be a nice stretch, and what you'll do is see how far you can go up before the stretch, do the stretch 10 times, and if you can go up higher with less pain. That's test, uh, retest. Yep, test, retest. The other way to do this, this may not make sense to the layperson, but right. this is the same stretch, and it's a little more complicated, too. You could do a broom stick. Yep, and you just need a stick about four to five feet long, whatever it is. Grab it like this, thumb down, palm away from you, go over the top of your head. Again, this is a little weird. Now, this would be the shoulder getting stretched. Palm is away from you, so the back of my hand can touch my back. Grab the stick there and pull up like this. This is actually the... The method that worked well for that patient I was talking about where it eliminated sure. the need for surgery. Again, you do this five or ten times. As you can tolerate. As you can tolerate it. I do the test and after the stretch do the retest. Retest. If it's better after the stretch, you know you're in the right direction. You're Be gentle. Don't get too aggressive. It may not come in one or two days, but as long as it progresses. Let's go to number two. Well do. Okay, the second stretch, we're actually getting this from Rick Olderman, who's a physical therapist. He's written a number of books on self, how people can self-treat. This is one of his stretches in order to get the scapula moving in the right direction. Right. If the scapula doesn't move with shoulder motion properly, it will create pain. So this is a stretch to allow mobility where it should be. And you do just like Bob is on here on all fours, holds his hands in one spot and stretches. And again, this should not create any sharp pain, a little stretch pain, but not too much. Don't overdo it, five to 10 repetitions, but do not get into that painful area. If this is starting to look good, you, and if this is the, the shoulder has a problem and you can go all the way back without pain, simply take this hand and move it over this way and that'll give you a little bit stronger of a stretch. So we get that scapular motion, so we know we have adequate scapular motion that's gonna help that shoulder joint. How you doing, Bob? I got a runny nose. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Bob, it's Christmas time. Yeah. 
Okay, we've got the third option, and this is actually from Dr. John Kirsch. He's written book, and he's got a number of additions to this. But he, he calls it, it's hanging, how to improve your shoulder health by hanging. He should know because he's a surgeon of shoulders, and he has uh, written this book, and actually he lost business because he started having people That's doing right. this, less surgeries. It's a good book. Uh, please buy it if you want to. It's written for the layperson. The primary stretch he talks about is hanging. Uh, look over here. Don't look at Bob yet because he's doing it, but he's doing a modified Bob and Brad method. Uh, if you have a pull-up bar at home, it works well. Um, if you have hanging handles, we think this works a little bit better, but it's not necessary. Pull-up bar is fine. Make sure whatever you have is low enough so that when you grab it, you're not hanging. So now... The, the wall, if the reason the wall or the pull-up handles work better because you're up against the wall and I'm sliding down slowly. And that's important that you don't get on this and hang all your weight right away because that can be too much too soon and you can cause problems. Oh, just go down and when you get 50% of the weight and see how it hangs, you know, how it feels. Uh, let it back up and see how it goes. And this is one of those things that's going to be some pain. A little bit. Yeah. Damn. Don't get too aggressive. Use good judgment. That's why the first day you do it, I wouldn't get too aggressive. See how it feels after you're done. You know, work it out. Come back the next day. If it feels pretty good, then you can add a little resistance and hang a little more. It may be a few days or a week before you can do full hanging. Uh, the goal isn't that you necessarily full hang right away. But once you get there... You're going to hang, and again, 10 to 30 seconds is all you're going to hang. All right. Uh, and actually, he does work talk. Work your way up. Yeah, you work your way up. I never, I do this for maintenance on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have hanging handles, you don't have a pull-up bar, but you do have a stick, a broomstick, a piece of doweling, uh, about four or five foot long, this is an option. Yeah, reach really high, lean forward a little bit. But make sure the hand is gripping tightly up here. When you lean forward and your hand doesn't move, what that does is it puts that pull or that hanging traction just like what we did over here. So it can work really well. This is a nice option for it, Bob, don't you I think? I feel like a monkey. Yeah, you look <laughs> like one. <laughs> okay. Now, after you get your shoulder so you can elevate it, you got that impingement worked out with, you may work more than one of these. Maybe only one of these techniques is working fine. So only use a technique that works good. But once your shoulder is feeling better, you need to do some specific strengthening. This is bonus on the video. Uh, we're going to show you Great. a couple techniques. You need a resistance band. And, you know, if you just have a band, you can do this motion. And that's going to work the external rotators of that sh shoulder. It works better if you can take that band and anchor it around a bedpost. A, a doorknob works really good. We've always used doorknobs with patients over the years, but we found out, uh, you know, if you use these for other exercises, you may have a wall anchor. You want to get one that's up to you. But anchor it somewhere where you can do this. Every therapist does this exercise for rotator cuff strength. Keep it right angle. Right angle here. Don't let this happen. No flying. Make sure that you have uh, the elbows in tight and you go out like this. I have found if it's sore and it kind of hurts up in here, I had a problem with this, and I reached over in here, put a little pressure right on the top of that joint, and all of a sudden, oh, I can. it feels much better when I do it that way. And then after about a couple of weeks, I didn't need to do that anymore. And it was a real... Help you all. Yeah, I right. made that up myself, yeah. Bob, but it really worked well. Good job. Yep. The next one, I want to show Bob this. We don't talk about this a lot, but if you have... I think this is forgotten in rotator cuff strengthening sometimes. Yeah. You take a ball that's squishy, put it on the wall, elbows straight, and then you lean into it. And this works on the muscles that contract to co-contract to stabilize the joint with pressure on it. Like if you're pushing a cart or a wheelchair or something like that, this exercise is really important. Push on it, make circles both directions, up and down, right and left, and you'll be amazed how much fatigue you feel in that shoulder joint after 30 seconds of doing that. Well, help the rotator cuff do its job. Absolutely. You first get at the range of motion, strengthen it, and then go to work and be careful. We don't mm. want to have shoulder problems your whole life. 
Well, Bob, once again, we could fix just about anything except for... A broken heart. Yeah, I'm not going to go crazy this time. I'm just going to be calm and Stay collected. Stay calm. Calm and collected. No stress. Mm-hmm. 